This module covers forest and landscape ecology, and for this micro lecture, we're going to look at some of the human impacts uh, to the system. Uh, first, we're going to need to define ecology, which is basically the study of interactions between organisms and the environment. Uh, therefore, forest ecology is uh, the study of interactions between uh, forest organisms, the flora and fauna, uh, and the environment. And to understand the ecology of a forested ecosystem, or for any ecosystem, you really need to understand the carbon cycle. And you're welcome to pause the presentation to, to uh, take some notes or, or get some more details. Um, the five major components of the carbon cycle include uh, the atmosphere, uh, the forest or vegetative biomass, your plants and your trees, your animal biomass, your microbes, which also contribute a great deal to the carbon cycle, and soil organic matter, the stuff locked up in the, in the soil. Um, taking a look at nutrient cycling in a forest ecosystem, you can kind of, this is a, you know, kind of a brief diagram of, of what's actually going on. Um, you have nutrients uh, deposited, uh, nutrients in the atmosphere posit, uh, deposited on the forested landscape or on the landscape in general. You have uh, vegetation um, uptaking nutrients and assimilating those nutrients, but you also have uh, uh, litter production when, when vegetation sheds leaves or dies, which goes back into the soil. Uh, organic matter is broken down by microbes and, uh, and the environment. Uh, those microbes also re uh, release gases, so it's it's a uh, it's a circular system or system that uh, that you need to pay attention to because it does dictate um, the functions of uh, of plant and animal life and growth in the forest. Under natural conditions, this cycle remains pretty balanced, even when we have major disturbances like major fires uh, and the last um, uh, the last glacial periods, the last ice ages, uh, major floods. Uh, enormous volcanic eruptions, um, the, uh, the ecosystem is able to recover over time and, and, and get back to that balance or equilibrium. But human disturbance adds the wild card to this function with uh, fragmentation caused by conversion of forest to agriculture, uh, development and, and road construction which can permanently alter the environment. Um, and also uh, human-induced fires and especially pollution or emissions from industrial and automobile sources and even just you know household trash can affect the system. Um, the I guess the most common or the most uh, one of the more popularly talked about uh, topics with uh, with pollution anyway is acid rain, and that is just the the you conversion of gases in the atmosphere to, uh, to a weak acid, either uh, nitric acid or sulfuric acid, um, due, to, due to smokestacks. And um, coal production, coal energy, energy production uh, through the use of, of burning coal is a major contributor to this. When you have uh, these weak acids directly deposited on the forest canopy, uh, the acid itself breaks down the, the kind of waxy cuticle on, on the leaf, which, uh, which can cause um, you know, a, a, an immediate or direct impact on on the plant, uh, interfering with photosynthesis. Uh, the nutrients can be leached from the canopy due to acid rain. Uh, can, uh, acid rain can disrupt pollination um, by altering the flower structure. And you know, some people have argued that well, actually, you know, sulfur and nitrogen are are nutrients and can can actually improve the soil. Um, so that could be considered a perceived benefit. But the indirect effects of, of pollution and this acid deposition, um, ozone production with, with pollution, uh, ozone production can uh, internally damage the leaves and uh, again reducing the, the ability of the, of the leaf to photosynthesize sunlight. And uh, you know, over time, increasing amounts of acid rain can, can change the pH. If you've ever been to the Great Smoky Mountains, to the tops of some of those peaks, such as Cleveland Dome, you can look out and see the, um, you know, the uh, Fraser fir uh, forests. That, you know, there's also an insect pest that has been attacking it, but many say that that it's a combination of, of acid, uh, the combination of acid rain and the attack by the hemlock woolly adelgid have have led to to what you see there on this slide, which is uh, uh, you know decimation of of the forest canopy. 
Nutrient losses in a forest are caused by four major, there's four major um, uh, factors that, that influence nutrient loss. You have erosion, which of course everyone knows when uh, nutrients are lost uh, from the soil or moved from point A to point B, which usually ends up uh, being a stream or river. You have nutrient leaching, and that's the permanent loss of nutrients um, ending up in the water as well, and which can also impact the, the water quality as these nutrients uh, load the stream and, call, and interfere with um, uh, normal stream uh, uh, flora and, and faunal activities. Uh, forest fires, these are either naturally or man-made, uh, cause uh, volatilization of these nutrients, and, and basically, you know, like it says there, the nutrients go up in smoke. And harvesting also is the removal of nutrients from, from the forest. Uh, in the Amazon forest region or tropical forest region, when where all of your um, nutrients are locked up in the forest canopy, when trees are removed, those nutrients aren't able to be recycled back into the system. So, it, you know, that's def a definite uh, nutrient loss. Global warming is another, uh, another popular topic um, when we're discussing human impacts on the environment. Uh, in your discussion board, there is an assignment there. But, you know, for the most part, global warming uh, has to do with more CO2, more carbon dioxide being released into the, uh, into the environment, which, affects, uh, which also has an effect on, on photosynthesis. Uh, dark photosynthesis is what happens at night with the plants that are, uh, uh, you know, processing all of the um, all the carbohydrates and starches that were made during the light phase of photosynthesis, and that has an effect. There's actually a study out um, about how uh, uh, poison ivy is getting bigger and more toxic due to the higher levels of, of CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, also, global warming has an effect on species migrations uh, in areas that are, are warmed up, so, or when you have this kind of uh, warming trend, species are able to move into areas that they previously had not been able to move into due to climate. Uh, the same way that humans were able to uh, move from Asia across the Bering Strait when things were warmer and there was more land exposed, the same thing goes on with, with plants. Uh, as the climate warms up, they're able to, uh, able to move from point A to point B. So therefore you see kind of forest types evolve as more species are able to enter. You know, they might be considered uh, you know, invasive species entering an area because the climate is conducive for them to do so. And you end up also with uh, more frequent uh, pest outbreaks. Um, with global warming, you know, one of the things that keeps the, ba uh, the balance of insect pests in check uh, are cold winters, especially here in the mountains. So the years where you have warm winters, typically the summer that follows, is, uh, is uh, you tend to see uh, a lot more pest outbreaks.